Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So, thank you all for joining me again today. I hope you've had a great week. It's Sunday morning and I've got Bronte home, which is really nice. She came home yesterday, was it? Or the day before? I think, no, it was Friday. Sunday now, isn't it? And um, yeah, she's home for a few days, which is really, really nice. She's just upstairs getting ready at the minute. But anyway, enough of that. I am back today to talk you through my January makes. And I did get most things done that I planned to make, apart from the trousers, which I can't remember the name of the pattern. Just hang on two seconds. Totally unprepared for this, but give me two seconds. Here we are, M7131, these wide leg trousers so as you know those of you that have been following me for a while I have made a couple of versions of these trousers already and I wanted to make some out of this gorgeous red crepe fabric I'm really sorry about the light at the minute it's you know last night was so stormy we had high winds torrential rain and then this morning it's just beautiful but the sun is just shining in the wrong angle and there's going to be patches of light all over so I am so sorry about that but anyway yes this red crepe fabric that I showed in my January plans vlog I was going to make into the 7131 as you can see it is still in fabric form 2d rather than 3d so I do still want to make those but I just got sidetracked as we do um, but anyway I have made one two three four five six things six things fully finished in January which is great considering I was working loads in January and I didn't have a lot of spare time so I thought I would talk you through what I got done and I'll start with what I am wearing so this is the by hand London Jenna dress which I will put a better picture of up here and I made this later on in the month and this wasn't actually in my plans because like always I just suddenly get a flash of inspiration that seems to come from nowhere and decide to make something and I wanted to make this so um it is a dress which has an empire line fit just under the bust it has waist darts well you can't really call them waist darts but vertical bust darts and horizontal bust darts just here as well so it's a fairly fitted empire bodice and then you have a bias cut skirt which in the pattern actually comes to just above your knee but I lengthened it to below the knee on me because I just thought that would be more flattering for me um you've got actually you have different bodices for this you've got a different version which is more high neck with a little collar and you can have a straight sleeve or you can have this sort of cute little sleeve that is split with a little tie detail and then yeah I did this version with this gorgeous neckline because I just really fancied this version to be honest and I love this neckline on me it has a invisible zip at the back which hopefully you can't see because that's the whole point of an invisible zip isn't it this light is going to drive me up the wall honestly so the by Anne London Jenna dress um I love this pattern absolutely love it I did make some tweaks to it and I didn't twirl it. This, in effect, was my wearable twirl. This fabric is a lovely viscose fabric. Sorry for the boob shot there, but yes, it's a lovely viscose fabric that I bought from Fabrics by Shayla. I will leave a link to her down below. She was originally just on eBay, but she does have a website of her own now. But it's a gorgeous sort of green and peachy floral viscose, as you can see. Changes I made to this pattern because as I say, this was going to be a wearable toile because this fabric was only £6 a metre, so it wasn't too expensive. And I knew, you know, the fit of this kind of bodice I was going to have to alter slightly. So what I did was I lengthened the bodice by an inch, and I think I added two or three inches to the length of the skirt. But I also dropped the bust starts by an inch as well and that works re has worked really well on me because the point of the dart comes to about here and the one underneath comes to there and my apex is about there so they're probably in the right place which was more by look than judgment. I took out two centimetres at the front neckline because I'm very hollow chested here and what I tend to find with these kind of 
tops when I've made them before is that they gape a lot here and I have a lot of loose fabric and as you can see it fits me really well now it's hooking my chest which is what I wanted um, and how I did that was I drew in the apex from both darts and then I drew a line from the front because obviously the front bodice is on the fold drew a line down to meet the apex point from this front here and I cut through that I and I cut through one of the darts I can't remember which one it doesn't matter which one you choose but I cut through one of the darts almost to the point so that I could rotate the piece and then I took out an, um, a centimetre which would obviously give me a centimetre on this side as well and then rotated that extra into one of the darts and then it's taken out an extra two centimeters in total of this front neckline which means it hugs my chest really well and I did exactly the same in the back neckline because another thing I find with these kinds of dresses is that they always gape out like this at the back and stand off away from me I mean I'm deliberately doing that now but I did about an inch in total on the back neckline exactly the same I cut down because this this bodice has back darts as well, so I just cut right down to the back darts and rotated out another another couple of centimetres, I think, on each side. And so it's taken in the top bodice by probably about an inch, an inch and a little bit, something like that. And um, it's it fits me really well now. I'm, I'm just super, super happy with it. So the sleeves, now, I'm going to be honest with you I don't like these sleeves now I did like them on the design I think they look great but I made a size 12 bodice and flared out to a 16 hip and that works well for the fit of the actual dress but with the sleeves I actually started with a 12 so it fit the arm sign then graded out to a 14 because I didn't think that the size 12 sleeves would fit me but even the 14 there is too much you know they don't even meet and they should meet to be honest so these are far too small and yeah I, I, I just yeah it's they're not right so my plan is that I am going to pinch the sleeve pattern from the McCall's 7537 which is a big balloon sleeve and take these off and add those ones on because I just think that will be a much nicer finish for me because these just get on my nerves if I'm honest so apart from that I love this dress absolutely love it so much that I've cut out a secondary one already and I've got the bodice part more or less finished what I'm planning to do with my second dress though is that I am going to put on a tiered and gathered skirt rather than the bias cut skirt love the bias cut skirt but I just want to try something a little bit different so what I did not remember what though was that this is empire line so obviously the the join from the bodice to the skirt is actually here high up under the bust and I cut out the bodice without remembering that and cut out the skirt pieces without remembering that so what I've actually had to do is create a midriff piece before I can attach the skirt so that the midriff piece drops the pattern to my natural waist and then I can attach the tiered and gathered skirt pieces from there so I have got that cut out already and it's halfway being made up but you probably have to wait until next month no this month end of this month beginning of next month to see how that turns out because I'm not sure it's going to work yet the fabric that I've chosen is a crepe fabric it's a beautiful fabric but it has absolutely no give in it whatsoever whereas this viscose like most viscoses do have a little tiny bit of give this has none at all and I'm not convinced it's going to zip up at the back because this will hang on my mannequin as it is currently and zip up with a little bit of room um the bodice that I have sewn up in the crepe fabric is only just meeting on my mannequin because there's no giving it so we'll, we'll see how that turns out but anyway moving along as I say I made this later on in January so it's one of the later makes of the month but I'm going to get changed into my next make because I suddenly remembered that I didn't film any twirls in this so I need to get changed into it to show you so give me two seconds and I'll be back with you so next up in my January makes is the Deer and Doe Scirocco jumpsuit which is this one and I made this in this lovely ponte that I bought from the textile centre probably about four or five years ago now and it's just been sat in my stash and I got this jumpsuit out of two metres of fabric which was really good but yeah this has been sat in my stash for a long time 
never really knowing what I wanted to make out of it and I thought you know what January was all about sewing from the stash as much as I could and yeah I decided to make up the Scirocco so this is my finished Scirocco here obviously it has pockets it has these little sort of slanted pleats in the front trouser piece um fitted waist crossover front and I lengthened the sleeves to just beyond elbow length which I wanted to do to make it more sort of winter appropriate I will go and take some better pictures of me wearing this so you can have a little look but I am super happy with how this came out I have made this pattern two two three times before and I really like it it is you know it's a pattern that you look quite dressed up in but actually it's it is I hate the term secret pajamas because I think it's overused and yeah it, it I just don't like it but it this I guess really does epitomize secret pajamas because you feel quite dressed up in it but it is super comfy to wear and still really flattering so I really like it I think I think this 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 fabric works super well with it um the fit on this is fabulous on me um yeah so I mean you can see this quite well can't you but it's it's a really really lovely jumpsuit and I'm really pleased with just lengthening the sleeves all I did was I just tapered the short sleeve down to um elbow length that's it really and sewed it up as as, as you do with any normal sleeve and it's worked really well so really really like it i haven't worn it yet actually because i've been working and it's not really work appropriate but i will definitely wear it at weekends i think it's great for this time of year on those cooler days but i can still be quite snuggly and get a cardigan over the top i can't remember what size i made i think it was a uk size 12 and then graded out again to probably a 16 hip I have the original pattern for this jumpsuit and I do believe that they have altered the new versions of this pattern slightly because the legs on the original pattern were, although they taper, they are still quite wide at the ankle and I think in the new version of this pattern they have tapered it in just a little bit more so that it's not quite as wide but I actually quite like that. I think it adds to the comfort factor and it's it's a really really nice really nice jumpsuit i'm super happy with it i think it's great so that was my second make of january moving on i did my second life sew along earlier in january and as part of that you guys voted for the chalk and notch page hoodie which i managed to get finished during the sew along and i chose some see you at six french terry which I'd had in my stash that I had bought from La Masi Fabrics. So I will just put this on a hanger and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is the Chalk and Notch page hoodie. Now, I loved sewing this pattern up. I absolutely loved it. I think the pattern is fantastic. The instructions are great and the just the little, there's little, little bits in the instructions little bits in the pattern such as it actually gives you two different cuff pattern pieces dependent on whether you're using your main fabric to create your cuff or whether you're actually using ribbon fabric which obviously has more give a lot more stretch and i thought that was really 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 good i did the cropped version with the drawstring waist and the drawstring at the neck and just cuffing for the sleeves and I did the balloon sleeve as well because there is a straight sleeve version and also a version where you can just do a normal waistband. Obviously mine is hooded as well. I did use the self fabric to line the hood because I didn't have any corresponding fabric that would complement this fabric but yeah I use this gorgeous grid French terry that is by See You at Six and it was part of their autumn collection I believe and as I say I got this from La Masi and yeah it's lovely. The drawstring tape I bought just from my local boys but you know you can pick up this stuff online. I decided to go with cream because I thought that blended quite well and I really didn't think there was any chance at all I'd be able to match this so I thought cream would work quite well and the grommets I had in my stash I think I used seven or eight millimeter grommets 
and I installed those prior to the sew along because I just had visions of it going horrendously wrong in the sew along and I'd end up with it just ruining it before I even started. So I had a little practice during the afternoon but I am going to do one of my short videos about how to install grommets anyway because I know a few people have had not issues with it but obviously it's 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 a technique that we don't use all that often generally isn't it and it's um it's one of those palm sweaty moments where you think you know you've got your garment done and you're having to stick holes in your fabric and you don't really want to do that and it all go drastically wrong do you so anyway i made a size medium and it came out really well. I did lengthen both the sleeves and the bodice by about an inch. Um, I think I did the sleeves by about an inch and a half actually. And that's worked really well. I tried my best to pattern match, but it was just impossible. I did manage to pattern match at the side seams. Um, I think that's come out quite well, hasn't it? But I will insert a picture of me trying this on. It's not the greatest picture because Martin took it and he's rubbish at taking pictures. But yeah, I love this, love this sweater. It's fantastic. And I, since I made this, I've dug out more of these types of jerseys from my stash. It only takes about a metre and a half and that included lining the hood for me. So, you know, and I'm tall and I have to lengthen patterns, as you know. So I would say that, you know, if you're, if you're more of an average size or petite size, you might even get away with a metre especially if you don't put the hood on at all. So yeah, it's it's a really good stash buster and I'm gonna make loads more of these because it is gorgeous, love it. So that was the sew along make and that was my third make of January. Moving on to my, my fourth make of January. I was meeting up with the lovely Ruan who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne in Leeds at the end of January and we were in discussions earlier in the month about making up something that we could wear for our sort of little shindig, little get together and we decided on the patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company which I will put here. Now when this pattern came out which was probably I think it was November, December time, something like that, I'll be honest I wasn't drawn to it totally. Um, you know, it was okay, but it wasn't something that made me think, oh, wow, I need to go and buy that straight away. But we decided to all get this pattern and make it up in our, our own, you know, our own way, as you do, and wear our finished blouses to our little get-together. So I, again, raided my stash for fabric for this pattern. And I chose this really lovely viscose that I got from Abacan. And I've got loads of this fabric. I think I bought about three or four meters of it. And it is in a cream base with these lovely zebras. They're not zebras. They really aren't zebras. <laughs> oh my word. Um, tigers? Yeah, they're tigers. White tigers, would you believe? Anyway, yes, they have tigers on and so we made this up over the course of about three weeks doing a little bit each week and I decided just to use a plain black viscose as a contrasting collar and that's not a look that I generally go for I tend to want everything to blend but I just had that vision in my head with this fabric I thought it would make the collar pop which it has done and I'm really really happy with it now this blouse obviously has a button up front. It has a collar which extends all the way round the blouse. It has a yoke at the back with a little bit of gathering in. And you've got two versions of sleeves. You can have a straight sleeve that hits just above the elbow and then you've got a longer balloon sleeve with a continuous lap and button fastening. Now, I lengthened the blouse by an inch and also the sleeve by an inch, but when I made it up, the sleeves were too short. I have done a full review of this pattern, so I'm not going to obviously go into great detail about it, but what I decided a couple of days before we were due to meet was that I took the cuff off and I made a bigger cuff. So this cuff is now much wider than the original cuff in the pattern and it hits me just right. So I know Ruan had added two inches length to her sleeve but I should have done that really. Um, I added in one of my lovely little labels from Kylie and the Machine and it's all faced inside but the facing is stitched down so it doesn't flap about which is really nice. I will insert a picture of me wearing it here so you can have a look 
The buttons I used were from the Textile Garden, uh, which are these ones here. You can just see those there and they're gorgeous. I love it. So I think I made a size medium again with this top and there's plenty of ease in it it's really lovely really like it i will definitely make this again and after seeing tamlin's because ruan and i both did the longer sleeve the the sort of balloon sleeve and tamlin did the shorter sleeve and i i just decided because of the time of year that i wanted to do this length sleeve but after seeing tamlin's short sleeve i thought yeah next time i'm going to make that one because it's actually super nice so that was my make number four so before i show you my last make in january i am going to cheat a little bit and show you this dress which i did make up during vlogmas in december but when i tried it on it didn't fit i couldn't zip it up and I had loads of finagling to do with the zip and altering the front bodice, etc. It is the 7537 by McCall's. And I made this up after seeing the lovely Sean from Kitnish Behaviour making up about three or four of these. She loves this pattern. And it looks gorgeous on her. And she didn't appear to have any issues making this dress. And I seem to have loads. And when I did look at... The reviews of this pattern online it did seem that a few people had a few issues with it but they weren't the same issues that I had so I don't know what was going on but I have lost some weight since I made this dress and I sort of put it to one side tried it on earlier in January it broke the zip straight away I could zip it up but it broke so I put it to one side because I knew that I needed to take the zip out and reinsert a new zip and I also wanted to change the rouleau loops because the rouleau loops that I'd made for it were too wide and they just needed to be narrower. So I decided to get that finished during January and the dress is now finished. So I am classing it as another make in January. So this is the finished dress here and I have changed the rouleau loops now. These are much narrower than the old ones so they work really well this fabric i got from what used to be indian royal treasure on ebay and i fully lined the bodice as well and i reinserted a new zip i bought one that was a little bit better quality from the trimming shop i'll leave a link to them down below and this is a 22 inch zip so i had to unpick all the old zip and reinsert it and I can now get this dress on um, probably because I've lost weight and it actually fits me. So I'm super happy with it. I really like it. Now, the only thing I'm not happy with is the length of this dress because I didn't have enough fabric to make it more of a midi length, which is what I would have liked. This comes to sort of just really below my knee, which is not a length that I generally like. Um, I either like it to hit just on my knee or just slightly above or be sort of midi length. That sort of just below the knee always feels a bit school mommy and frumpy. It's, it's a bit of a frumpy length for me. So I don't particularly like that. But, you know, this was a wearable toile because I do have some Atelier Jube fabric. I will put a picture of me wearing this dress up there so you can have a look. But I have some Atelier Jube fabric, which is obviously was a lot more expensive than this, which I want to remake the 7537 out of. Now, it's still doesn't fit quite right because what I did was I deepened the midriff to get the length that I need because you've got the bodice pieces and then you've got a big midriff band before it goes into the gathered skirt and the midriff panel comes so far up to sort of empire line but it is so fitted it feels like it is just really digging into my ribs so i am going to have another play about with the pattern pieces i think i'm going to take that excess out of the midriff and attach it to the top bodice pieces just to see if that feels better and then i'm going to retwile this dress i think before i cut into that atelier jupe fabric but it's not going to be on my plans for february because there are too many other things i want to make right now um, but, you know, as a first toile, I do like it and I really love the design on me. The style, I think, really suits my figure and I, you know, I think it's really bohemian and I really like it. But I want to make a, one with a longer skirt. I want to make sure that I can still fully line the bodice because I really like how that looks and feels on the inside. But I need to retwile this. So I am going to have to pick some fabric out my stash to have another go at this and just make those few tweaks so that I can get this to fit right because I do think it's worth it because I think it will be a lovely dress when it fits me properly. So 
On to my final make of January. Now, one of the things that I said I wanted to make in January was the Wilder Gown by Friday Pattern Company. Now, again, this is a dress that I think has a bit of a Marmite factor to it because on the pattern envelope, on the model, it looks amazing. But it is one of those designs that I think if you don't get the fabric right, your fabric choice right, it can look very nightgownish, it can look very maternity wear. And unless you're pregnant or going to bed, none of us want to look like that, do we? We want to look cool and chic, don't we? Let's face it. So I knew that although I've got the height to carry this pattern off, I knew that my body shape would, it would look very maternity-like on me. So I needed to make some alterations to it to see if I could get this dress to be more wearable and fit in more with my style and I have made it before in a top version which I absolutely love as a blouse I think it's lovely but I thought you know I need to I need to alter this so I set about altering the bodice first because again this is an empire line loose fit dress with tiers that that fall from the empire line so the first alteration I made was to drop the empire line to my natural waist and then alter the depth of the tiers to correspond with that so that it still made this into a maxi dress for me. I also wanted to change out the elbow, well it's sort of three quarter length straight sleeve into a balloon sleeve because I thought that would work quite well and then I decided to add in some ties at the side seams as well to tie it at the back which I thought would just cinch it in at the waist and then fit me and I am really pleased to say that those alterations worked super well and the finished dress I'm really happy with so let me show you it here she is it's very difficult in this fabric for you to see the style line so I will try and point it out for you as much as I can but the Wilder gown has this channeling at the top which is gathered in with a tie here it is raglan sleeved and so I knew that I wouldn't be able to just choose out a balloon sleeve from any of my other patterns and add it in because of that feature so what I did was I slashed and spread the sleeve that was already part of this pattern to open it up and give that extra volume that you need one thing I completely forgot was that this wasn't a full length sleeve so this sleeve is still three quarter length on me and I did want this to be a full length sleeve but actually I'm really happy with how it looks so the bodice now instead of being empire line comes to my natural waist the seam is just here and then I have two tiers that fall from that seam and then at the back of the dress I have inserted some plain black viscose ruler loops that I made and I made these using the pattern piece for the tie that goes around the neck. I just cut two more out of some plain black viscose that I use as a tie which are essentially tied in at the back like that and cinch the waist in like so. I will insert some pictures of me wearing it here but I took these pictures on a really blustery day. It seems to be Every day is a blustery day at the minute, so um, they're probably not the best pictures, but I hope you can sort of see what the finished dress looks like. But I'm really happy with it. I only want to make sure that next time I lengthen this sleeve so that it is a full length sleeve, but otherwise it worked really, really well with those changes. And I think I've got a dress now from that pattern that I want to make again because I love how this looks and how it feels on me. I wore this to work and the first patient I saw when I wore this said to me, oh, I really like your dress, which I never get that. All these people that sew that say, you know, people always compliment them on their, their um, garments. I never get that ever in real life. So that was a real boost. It's, it's lovely. It's a really lovely dress. This fabric is a viscose and I got this from the lovely JJ, who is the Camden Stitch. And yeah, I bought this from her fabric edit shop when she was selling fabrics a couple of years ago now. And it's gorgeous. It's super, super lovely. I really love it. So as I say, the only thing is you can't see the style lines in this fabric because of the busyness of the pattern. But I still love it. It's just fabulous. So really, really happy with how those changes turned out. And um, yeah, I've got another dress that I absolutely love. 
So that's it for January. I think I've just talked forever, it feels like. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at my makes. I will be back really soon with my February plans, even though we're already a week into February, and also an announcement on what we're gonna be making in the next Alive So Along that will be later this month. So watch out for those vlogs coming up really soon. So I hope you're well, and thanks for joining in with me today. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you really soon. Bye.